first thing you're going to do is open After Effects. This is going to pop up if you're a beginner. I'm going to do New Composition and you can click that too. But I like to keep my stuff at 1080 by 1080. My frame rate is 30 frames per second. And then the duration, I like to keep them around 2 to 5 seconds. After that, you can just press OK. So boom, this is going to pop up. I'm going to title my project to the what we're gonna do is import our photos first and this comes to my first point the idea itself should be good this logo is for someone else he gave me the idea of like the bubbles popping so i think that's a good idea that would like be a good logo if you don't have ideas i highly highly suggest pinterest we're on pinterest just <laughs> use pinterest we're gonna import our pictures using command i or control i and he provided me with this cat image i love this we're going to worry about text in a second, but number two, my second point, is to have high quality images slash overlays or text. Now, this image is not like the best quality, but when I say quality, I also mean like good composition. The actual shape and the image itself looks cool. Now, what I'm going to do is crop this because there's like a little white line. I don't know if you see it. But what I'm going to do is use the pen tool and then I'm just going to mask around it. So you can press G on your keyboard and then use the H tool, hand tool, to move this around. So I'm going to simply go around it like this and then boom. Alright, that's done. If you need your picture to be like transparent basically, what you can do is add Luma key. I'm going to add a new solid just so you can see like it changing. And then if we put this under here and then we change this to darker, which it already is on. If we turn up the threshold, we can see like the background being removed. Usually I like to keep the background black, but you can also do like a green screen background, but do black. Now we're about to start making the actual logo, but first we're going to do the idea of the bubbles popping. All right guys. So here is the animation I made. Now that I watch it, it's not like not that bad, but like it's still bad. What we're going to do is crop this and just press shift control or command D and then I'm going to use Luma key to remove the background. Add that on there and then I'm going to just turn up the threshold and then I'm just going to feather the edge just like a little bit and then I'm going to scale this down using S and then if I want I could like align it. So I'm just going to scale this down and then I can just move this regularly. Perfect. And then period. You see how this bubble is like still standing there? What we're gonna do is basically keep it there the first frame. And then after that, we're going to delete the bubble out. So on the first frame, it's gonna be there. And then the second frame, we're going to simply just crop it out. I'm actually gonna pre-compose this whole image, but first I'm gonna see how long I want this logo to be. I'll just do three seconds just to be safe. And then I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm going to drag this over here. And then I'm gonna change this to trim comp to work area. Now I'm gonna pre-compose this. Shift command C guys. To make these eyes rotate, what we're going to do is we're gonna duplicate this twice and then we're going to mask out the eyes. We can just use the ellipse tool and then we can just do like a shape. And then of course you can move this if you want and just press V on your keyboard so then you can like actually move it. Perfect, perfect. Now we're gonna do the other eye. This one's more round, thankfully. Move this like this and then all I have to do is do that. Period. That one was way simpler. Now, for the actual animating. This brings me to my third point. Make sure your logo is always moving. To actually rotate the eyes, all you have to do, I'm gonna go to the beginning of my timeline and then press R if rotation is not already there. And then you're gonna click the stopwatch and then you're gonna go forward a few frames. I'm gonna just go to the end and then I'm just going to rotate this. And then depending on however fast you want it, it looks like that. And then for the other one, we're just gonna duplicate this one on the other one. Just so it's like, yeah. And then we're gonna scale this down. And then once you play it back, it should do something like that. I'm gonna mirror this. All you have to do is search for mirror and then just put that on there. I'm just gonna use Naughty Wands Prime Tools mirror. Perfect, perfect. I'm gonna change the brightness of the eyes so it's a little brighter. And then after that, we're done with that animation. All right, guys, so we have finished the rotating eyes. Of course, you can add motion blur if you want. Now it's time for the actual like moving of the whole entire logo. And that's where we add all the text and stuff. I think I'm gonna pre-compose all this low key. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So first I'm gonna click the top layer or you can low key just drag over all these and then we're going to pre-compose it. Shift control or command C and then we're gonna name this main logo move. 
movement. It's not the main movement, but anyways, we're gonna press okay. And then after that, it should be good. Now, after this, we're gonna go towards the like end, but we're not going to the actual end, but we're gonna go around like one second. And then we're gonna press S and we're gonna click the stopwatch, go to the beginning. And then we're gonna change this to zero. And then it should do this, but we have to add a graph. We're gonna highlight over these, right click one of them, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then we're going to click the graph editor thing. And then we're going to do a graph like this. I kind of like my logos fast, but um, it's up to you. If you have an idea in mind, you can add whatever movement you want. I low key, I'm not gonna add like that much movement, but what I am gonna add is some trim paths. And I use that in a lot of my logos because they look cool. But we're gonna press layer, new, and then we're gonna do shape layer. And then after that, we're gonna make sure fill is off, so it should be checked off. And then we're gonna change the color of this to white. And then we're going to do like an oval shape. We're gonna change the stroke width because it's a little too thick, um, but yeah. And then after that, we're just going to move this. I'm gonna use position to move this. And then boom, we have our little circle. So we could keep it like that, but I want to make this 3D. So we're gonna put this on top and then we're gonna make this 3D. And then after that, we're gonna like, kind of like make a Y2K like type circle thing like this. And then we're just gonna rotate this to our liking. Um, I kind of, I think that's cool. And then we're gonna move the position a little bit. And then once you like the placement, all right, I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit more. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go under this and then I'm gonna press add and then I'm going to click trim paths. And then after that, I'm gonna go under it. And then I'm gonna change the start to 100 and then I'm gonna click the stopwatch. I'll go forward a few frames and then I'm going to do that. And then I'm gonna to go to the middle of these two keyframes and then I'm gonna click a stopwatch for end. And then I'm gonna go past the last keyframe on start and then I'm gonna change it to zero. And then we get something like this. And then with the trim path, it's like slicing the bubble in half. Like I didn't even think about that, but I think it's a cool asset. After that, you can add motion blur and then we have a little bit more movement. But number four, we have effects and extra stuff to give it flavor. You know, it just makes your logo a little bit more interesting. After that, we're going to make a new null layer. But what we're gonna do is we're going to link these two things to the null. We're gonna kind of like scale it up when it like slices. So we're gonna go in the middle of these two keyframes because we want the keyframes to overlap. And then we're gonna press S, click the stopwatch, go past this keyframe right here. And then you're gonna scale it up a little bit. Easy ease them and then go into your graph editor and then we're gonna change this to speed graph. And then we're gonna do something like this. And then after that, it should like scale up like that. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, it should look something like this. I'm gonna drag this one out a little bit more because we want the movement to really show. So this font is called Char Ch Charlie or sharp. It should not be this hard to say Charlie. But what we're gonna do is use this font and then I'm going to move this over here. And I kind of want the text animation to like start around here. And then if you want it to bend, make sure you're on your text layer. And then you're simply going to click here and then click here. And then you're gonna like drag it and that should like start bending. Click this twice and then you're gonna go under text and then go under path options. And then you're gonna change this to mask one. And then it should, you know, bend a little bit. And then of course we can move this if we want. But what I'm going to do is actually add another trim path, but all you have to do is duplicate this. And then I'm going to rotate it the other way. So like this, and then I'm gonna move this back a little bit. But this time I'm gonna like have it stay there a little bit more. So I'm gonna change the rotation of it. And then I'm going to move this over here. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of space these out just a little bit more. So yeah, it should look like this. And then we have to add a text animation. All right guys, so the text preset will be linked below, but I did this one right here. I'm gonna go under animator, arrange selector, and then I'm gonna go under, I'm gonna go under expression. And basically what we can do is change the property. So if I wanna like add scale to this, I can add some and then it does this, but I kind of don't like that. But what I am going to add is a little bit of position. It's kind of just random for real, so experiment. Last thing I wanna add is like a little accent color. So I'm gonna change the color of the fill in here. We're just changing the colors individually. Okay, I'm actually gonna go for like a blue accent. So it should look something like this now. But well, last thing I need to do is make it zoom out. So I'm gonna make another no layer, the last one. I didn't use that as many as I thought, but 
anyways i'm going to link this no layer to the no layer 2 and then it should scale out we're going to click the stopwatch for scale just press s on your keyboard if you haven't already and then i'm going to move this keyframe back just a little bit and then i'm going to go towards the end and then i'm going to change this to zero and then we're going to highlight over them easy ease them go into our graph editor we're going to change this to value graph this time and then we're going to simply do something like this we're going to do like a little graph like that an overshoot so then it pops out just a little bit all right there we go it's kind of fast which i like last thing i want to add for real i'm gonna like add a little burst of white bubbles so i'm gonna press layer new shape layer no solid and then i'm gonna change the solid color to white press ok and then i'm just gonna mask these like white shapes but i'm gonna put this under here now so this should be on the very bottom layer and then we're going to change the position of it and then we're going to put this up here and then we're going to change the size of it so i'm just going to scale this down and make sure you center the anchor point in the center and then i'm just gonna scale this down scale this down i'm gonna like move this right here i might put them like on this side maybe and then i'm gonna scale this up all right now i'm gonna change the gradient of these so i'm going to put like change the positioning of this so i'm gonna put this up here this up here no yeah, that's fine. And then I kind of want it to be like that. And then I'm going to copy this gradient and then just paste it on my other circle. And then it should look something like that. And like, I'm kind of going for the Y2K vibe. So I'm going to like graph them. So I'm going to choose this point and then we're going to doom, doom. After we've clicked the stopwatch, we're going to go backwards a few frames and then we're going to put these behind the layer. So then they like pop out. So I'm going to do something like that. Highlight both of your keyframes, easy ease them. And then we're going to do a speed graph. So change this to speed graph. And then we're going to do a graph like this. And then we're going to add motion blur, of course. And then we can cut these. So then they're like not showing in the beginning of the logo. And then last thing that we need to do is connect these two layers to the null layer. So the first one is fine. And then once you play it back, okay, it's a little fast. So I'm going to change that really quick. All right. And all I'm doing is highlighting these edges and then I'm moving them. And then of course, I look, you want to add gradient to this one as well. So the text layer, I'm going to add gradient to just so it like has some depth. Perfect. And then if we want, we can change the color of the circles, of course. Perfect. And then this one, I'm going to do like a lighter blue. All right. I think that's good. And then after that, it comes out and then and then after that, I can like make both of them rotate to match like the, you know, white line moving. I hope this makes sense. I'm going to redo the no layer really quick. I'm going to change the color so you don't get confused. And then I'm going to attach these two to the no layer. And then I'm simply going to rotate it like that, basically. And then I'm going to have it rotate with the trim path. And it should do something like that. And then after that, we're going to do a speed graph and we can do something like this. Perfect. And then as you can see, these layers kind of got messed up. So we might have to redo the positioning of these. So we're going to tuck these in so you don't see them. And then I'm also going to change the scale. And yeah, I'm just going to edit this null layer to be a little bit more smooth, not too tight, but not too loose. Um, and then we can just click both of them, press T, click the stopwatch, and then we can make the opacity fade out. So very like simple. And then yeah. We're basically done with all the movement. Once we're done with the movement, we can just pre-compose all these layers. I'm going to add an adjustment layer and then I'm going to add warp shake. And then after that, I'm going to add another adjustment layer and then I'm going to add brightness and contrast. And then I'm simply going to press U on my keyboard with this keyframe over here. Make sure it's at zero. And then this will be like a higher amount. Go back and then put this one to zero. And then if you want, you can also add another shake right here. So I can like duplicate this warp shake if I want. And then it should look something like this. And then I'm gonna add another shake just because. And then I'm going to add glow. And I'm gonna add, where is it? I'm just gonna use regular glow just because I'm like, yeah. And then put this to zero. And then we're gonna put this to zero. So it should be zero and then a higher amount. And then, yeah, yeah, no. And then we get something like that. And then after that, I'm going to add panning. I actually have a preset already. Um, it uses Sapphire, but yeah. I'm just gonna have it like increase a little bit more like around the shake. 
and then I'm going to like change the frequency as well, well amplitude, and then I'm just going to paste the original one after that, and then yeah. And then finally, last but not least, we add the extra effects, which is RSMB, or you use force motion blur, and then I'm going to add some RGB, and then deep glow. And then of course if you want, you can add flicker, but I usually don't use flicker, but I use it for this one. But yeah. But yeah, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, I love you. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.